I didn't launch the wars that killed millions of people. I didn't ship in the narcotics that killed millions of people. But how is it I'm the bad guy? Yeah, so, but do you sensationalize yourself? I'm the globalist lethal injection. And I, I'm ready to die. Zuck is watching right now. Say Sandberg's watching. Larry Page, Sergey. Would you ever want to be back on these social media platforms or you're okay if they never ever let you back on again? Follow the news. If you follow media, you're going to see this face. You're going to see this name, Alex Jones, who is recognized. I think it's pretty fair to say you are uh, the most controversial political figure in America today. Is that fair to say something like that? Uh, yeah, Identify uh, you as that? I'm the most banned person in the 21st century. There, there's no doubt that I'm the most demonized, most attacked person in the world today. So you've been now banned off what? Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, over, Reddit, over. Instagram, every single one of these all have banned you. Take our Apple app. We just launched it a week before we got banned a month ago. It had over 2 million downloads, so they just banned it. It went um, to number one. So we're banned for being number one. Wow. And then they want us banned so they can then lie about what I supposedly stand for. See, that's what they do. They ban you, and then they demonize you. Your YouTube channel has roughly 1.5 billion views, give or take. That was just one of them. We had that's like just one of them. They had 5 billion views total. 5 billion views total. They, banned, they blew them all away. Over 20 channels in one day. Just pew. Now, your website, you're doing what you're doing right now, but what are you doing right now? What are you thinking about all this stuff that's taking place with you in the last, you know, couple months here, last six weeks? Look, I, I had a big audience, and I'm, and I'm on a couple hundred radio stations still and, and 500 TV stations, so we, we still reach a lot of people, but Hillary Clinton ran ads about a month before she lost in 2016, and she thought it was such a negative figure that they edited these tapes and they, they played these tapes out of context, uh, demonizing me and then connecting it to Trump. And then when she lost, the Democrats actually believed that I was Trump's brain. She ran $18 million of ads, the Federal Election Commission says, on TV and the web saying that I am in charge of Trump. It's not tr true. You ever talk to Trump, he's in charge, okay? And I, and I have some connection to Trump, but like one-tenth of what they say. So they ran $18 million of ads on YouTube and Google and Facebook and TV saying, here's Alex Jones, he's Trump's brain. He tells Trump what to do. And they'd show a clip of Trump saying something similar and me saying something similar. $18 million. $18 million. So they ran that according to the Federal Election Commission. And then when she lost, all hell broke loose. We had like advertising deals, you name it. I lost like $10 million the first month when Trump won. Everything was coming after me. They were, the people were suing me, you name it. Lost they, or gained? You lost after he won. When he won, they went after my sponsors, everything, because they actually believed their own propaganda, which wasn't true, that I was like telling Trump what to do. And so once he, once he won, they had run this ad thinking connecting me that, out of context with radical statements to the to to the then uh, candidate would demonize him, but then when it failed, they believed their own propaganda. They smoked their own dope, and then almost two years later, it has been one hell of a ride. They literally believe their own BS that I am in charge of Trump and I'm giving him every move, and it's the opposite. I may have talked to Trump since he got elected ten times, and it's usually. You know, hey, Alex, hope you're doing well. God, it's it's bad. Let's make America great again. Let's unify people. It's like pat me on the head phone calls. I don't tell Trump anything to do. But the Democrats literally believe, because I'm low-hanging fruit, that if they get me, they've got Trump. When's the last time you spoke to Trump? In the last few months. Last few months. And what's he telling you? What's he telling you when you're talking to him? We're going to turn the economy around. It's getting better. We need to unify people. We need to be positive. We need to bring everybody together, no matter what color they are, who they are. If you've spoken to him 10 times, ever since you've been banned, have you had a conversation with him since the ban or no? No, I mean, I've had conversations with people high level in the campaign and in the White House. Okay. And I've just said, listen, they've demonized me as a straw man with $18 million during the campaign. Now it's tens of thousands of articles a month everywhere lying about me, never showing what I supposedly said, just claiming I said something. 
And I said, this is clearly, just like the Nazis did, you pick a group and then you demonize that minority group. And then once you set the precedent that people accept going after them, then it's everybody else. So I'm the first domino. Because I've studied history. I was smart enough to understand that I'm not this important. They picked me because I'm flamboyant and stuff out of context to demonize Trump. Now that he won, they have ramped it up that I'm this horrible person. And then now they are going to try to shut me down. And then once they shut me down over a hundred plus platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, iTunes, you name it, mm -hmm. it'll be everybody else. And just like I predicted, as soon as I was shut down, it was a domino effect for everybody else. So that's the plan. Prayer University banned, shadow banned, blocked. Uh, Gavin McGinnis, uh, you name it. I mean, it's everybody has been shadow banned or blocked. My family will like put a pro-Trump tweet out or, hey, our economy's doing great and they ban him for a week on Twitter. It's everyone I know. It's, it's like Trump said in the tweets, millions of people are being blocked from the digital commons. And people say, oh, these are private companies. You can't restrict them. They are under federal law as a digital commons. They operate under the system and under the rubric that they are not publishers, that they are simply operating systems that allow debate. And so they have admitted that they're a digital public square. But what they're doing is selectively banning nationalist, conservatives, patriots, uh, you name it, from that digital square 50-something days out from the election. Has anybody ever banned at the level that you've been banned ever in the history of America? I know Milo was banned off Twitter, but he was suspended for like a couple of weeks. It wasn't like a permanent ban, right? I know uh, Tommy Lauren had an issue where a couple of her YouTube channels were shut down. Even I think PewDiePie had an issue, right? Well, PewDiePie had an issue when he made a comment about ISIS and they were uncomfortable with him, so he lost his verification. But has anybody ever been at the level that you've been banned? No, no one. It's, it's because I'm exposing that our government has sold out to multinationals. I'm exposing that the communist Chinese have taken control of Hollywood and have taken control of the universities and have allied themselves with radical Islam and all the rest of this. That's why they want me shut down. And they believe that if they can set the precedent to shut me down, then they can shut everybody else down. So that's why this is happening. What is this new thing where they say, don't interview Alex Jones? What is it? Because they've built a straw man of things I haven't said. I'm glad for the tough questions. They build a straw man yeah. and then they don't want me to respond. Here's an example. There's a video on Infowars.com right now that only covered today because it got national attention. I walk out of the Senate hearing on internet censorship and these women run up. Is the Hispanic women. I love everybody. Today. This happened today? Well, no, it happened last week, but I heard it today. Okay, got it. And the news said that I called them all these names. No, they said, you're a white piece of crap. Your family's inbred. You're a monkey. All these things. I said, you're a racist. The national news edited that with me saying you're a racist, but not showing the clip of them saying that. You can have white racist, Hispanic racist, right. black racist, whatever. I'm against all that. I believe Martin Luther King. So that's what I'm saying is, is that they don't, they want to ban me so they can then misrepresent what I've said and what I've done. But your whole question going to, is it self-inflicted? They're after me because they can track back the reboot of 1776. They can track back how the economy's coming back and how the globalists suppress things by design to me. And, and I don't want to even want the credit, but they believe, George Soros and the globalists believe, that I'm the first domino and that we triggered this grassroots movement to launch Trump. So they believe if they take me out, Trump can continue on or be defeated. So why did I bring you on, okay? I'm a content creator. I'm a capitalist. I'm an entrepreneur. And you're allowed to interview who you of want. Course. No, but how I, far down the rabbit hole are we that you've got to even like ask, can I interview yeah, Alex Jones? Listen. I could be Adolf Hitler. So I brought you because there is partially a concern for content creators when somebody is being asked to, you know, don't say anything. This is going to some other countries that ran it that way that told people to not share their opinions. Even a Bill Maher who doesn't agree with you. A lot of things that you say politically, he defended you. Ted Cruz, who I think tweeted out and Ted Cruz said, 
you know, here's a man who claimed my dad killed JFK. Like, that's what he said on Twitter. You probably saw that. He said, but, you know, does this give the right for these Facebook and everybody to shut them down and take them off? No. So people, are, but I want to I preface this question. There are people who agree and disagree with you who are defending you. The part I'm trying to ask from you is the following. Is there any part of this that is self-inflicted that is caused? I run a business. We have flaws. Some of it is self-inflicted. Some of it is my COO. Some of it is my CMO. Some of it is my chief financial officer. But I know a lot of it is me is because I'm the Is there things I should have done better? What is self-inflicted from your side? I want to be accused. I'm proud of what I've done. I'm not perfect. I've made big mistakes. Uh, there's tons of stuff I wish I would have done better. I was in the heat of the moment. But I stand by what I've done overall. But I stand by what I've actually done, not what media claims I've done. So you're like, hey, you're okay doing this interview. You know, I'm interrogating you. I love it. This is what I appreciate is people that actually face me instead of lying. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for clarity, man. I'm, I'm looking for clarity to see your, your brain. Like, where is this coming from? I'll, I'll try asking this one more time, and I'm curious to know what you're going to say. Initially, I asked... What caused this? Is it self-inflicted? You know, is it something that happened? Is there a blind spot? Is there a blind spot? Like, you know, a, a lot of times in business, you know, entrepreneurs, business people have blind spots. They're reckless in certain area. They're reckless with gambling. They're reckless with this. Do you think one of the blind spots for you is sometimes you get so excited and animated and your, your energy, like your, your words, they come out so fast because your brain's going a million miles an hour that sometimes you catch yourself overselling something? Oh, you, definitely. I totally sometimes... Like, you hear your rebroadcast, you're like, God, I'm an idiot. And when you're not all calculating, you get things wrong sometimes. So definitely, I get things wrong sometimes. I'm talking sensationalizing something. I'm talking, here's what happened, but let me tell you what else Hillary did. Let me tell you what else Barack did. Let me tell you what else, you know, Bush or 9-11. Let me tell you what else. And then you take it to hold it. Like, let's just say it's a seven. It's a crisis. You take it a lot. Undoubtedly, I've exaggerated things. Okay, well, there you go. That's, that's but usually it's like the opposite. But because you overly sensationalize, you make me take the credibility out of what's coming out of your mouth. And so for me, I'm sitting there, let's just say whoever I'm, I'm Zuck, I'm, 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 I'm Jack Dorsey, I'm any of these guys. I'm sitting there, I'm getting heat, which I'm getting all the time. And you know they're getting heat all the time to want to ban Trump. He can't do it because Trump helps his uh, stock go up. So, but yeah, da, 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 da. And then there is the shooting. What if you wouldn't have gone that route? What if it was just purely educational? What if it was just, I'm going to give oh, you the no info. Doubt. There's no doubt when I see the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, Shane, the conspiracy theorists say there's a sex club in this place in D.C. And then we cover it and then they say, I did it. You better believe now I don't cover that. Is it fair to say that? Do you understand that I never covered that pizza place? until the Washington Post, the New York Times, and CNN did. And then 4chan, which is a bunch of operatives, you know, supplied all the BS, and then my reporters covered it. You understand, we didn't create that story. People questioned things, and they looked at my whole life's work and said, let's point at this, and let's go after him for that. You said, I didn't bring up Pizzagate. Other people did. And then I started talking about it, right? Fine. That's kind of like you saying, I didn't invent guns. John Doe did. I just used it. So you took that story that they started talking about, and then you sensationalized it, and a guy went out there and shot the place. So the part when you're asking no, me about... No, the media said that some out-of-work actor hooked into them that no one even proved shot the place did that. It's like a way to even ask the first amendment. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. So the, the concern... No, I, no, no. CNN... And MSNBC and the New York Times, they kicked it off. Okay, I, I get that. Fine. But the guy was inspired after a sensational... Okay, if I'm running a country, Alex, say I'm running a country, okay? Say I'm a president of a country and I got two terms, okay? I, as a leader of the nation, have to sit there and make sure the, the decisions that are being made are going in the right direction. And I want to make sure conspiracy theories... If they're being told, they're being held accountable. And my biggest concern as somebody that runs a country is going to be, hey, I don't want somebody that's taking a story and sensationalizing and making it more. So what's the benefit of that? Well, i got to make sure I allow both sides of the media to have platform. Now, if I'm a dictator, I can only have one side. That's so, right. they, so they've shut me down. But you, but no, I mean, I'm being shut down. Sure. 
Yeah. Because I'm but the evil guy. What, whatever happened to you right now, you don't think any of it is self-inflicted? None of us are perfect. I've done a lot of mistakes. I, if I went back in hindsight, I've done a lot of things different. But the media misrepresents what I say. So how can I say sorry for things they said? So you are just not even letting them have one on you. You're not giving them one bone. Oh, I've said 500 times that I believe Sandy Hook happened. I'm going back four years. They never say I said it. So you're like, let them have one on you. Yeah, but I mean, you get banned and you come out and you're, you're going in front of Dorsey. You were at his court. You know, you were chasing him down. You were chasing Rubio down. I mean, you're, you know, is, is any... Yeah, no, no, no. When they told me, lay down and die or yeah. we'll ban you completely, I'm fight back. Absolutely. I'm on fire. Wait, you've seen nothing. Yeah, I've seen nothing. So this whole thing with pizza gay theory, none of the, the stuff that you have, they... Well, the Catholic Church running giant pedophile rings, that's confirmed. And the fact that it was in the WikiLeaks that there were these giant child kidnapping rings, NBC, ABC, CNN, they focused on a pizza place in D.C. to divert everyone, like a broken, you know, like a mockingbird. Mm -hmm. The mother acts like its wings broken. So we had it all, like the kids are going to be in the hot tub and Obama wants the hot dogs, $65,000 worth. We were covering that. And then they diverted off to D.C. and people covered it. And then I said, oh, yeah, that's not what was going on. So they go, oh, my God, pedophilia doesn't exist. Well, I'm no, pedophilia exists. It's all coming out in the news. And their old PR stuff with me isn't going to work. So, again, we go back to Sandy Hook. Six years ago, kids getting shot by a Prozac head who got a gun illegally. And I've been saying for years I think it happened. But the media keeps saying I didn't. And we go back to Pizzagate, pedophilia doesn't exist. Well, everybody knows it does. So again, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm far beyond even caring what people think anymore. I've genuinely tried to cover the facts. I've genuinely looked at things. I've been set up, I've been led down rabbit trails. That part doesn't matter. The truth is, this world government's coming down. This whole vampiric system is coming down, and I feel damn good about it. It's comments like that that get you in trouble, what you just said right there. This whole government is coming down? This whole corrupt system is coming down. Define corrupt system, ran by who? The private interest of the Federal Reserve, the big Vatican systems, the traffic in children, the people that ship narcotics into America. The corrupt system is in the spotlight and it's coming down. And to make this clear, you're not talking about one side of politics. You're saying this is happening on both sides. You're talking about the elitist. And, and what I'm saying is, is that I'm dead already. I already passed the river sticks. So, Everything I'm doing now is pure victory. See, this is the kamikaze mission. People think humanity just takes this stuff. No, the spirit of humanity manifests itself in resistance. And so that's what's happened. It's not about, it's not about me. It's about what do we do to Hollywood? What do we do to the corrupt blue blood Republicans? What do we do to the Democrats? What do we do to let them know we're still alive? And that's what I've done. It doesn't mean, you know, that things don't get a little messy in this thing. At the end of the day, I'm not raping little kids. Define messy. I didn't launch the wars that killed millions of people. I didn't ship in the narcotics that killed millions of people. But how is it I'm the bad guy? I'm the guy you can't talk to. I'm the guy that can't be heard. I'm the guy that's got to be banned. There's got to be reason for it, though. Well, it's because the mainstream media are good people. I mean, Apple and Google and Facebook are nice people, and they're protecting you from Alex Jones. That's why. These are good people. These are sweetie pies. Mark Zuckerberg, he called his users dumb fuckers, but he didn't mean that. He's an angel. He's a sweetie pie. And so is Nancy Pelosi, and so is Michael Moore. They're not bad people. They're good people. And we should just roll over because you saw what happened to Alex Jones. You saw what happened to him. So you better sit down and shut up. And you better do whatever we say or you're going to pay. But see, some people don't care. Some people don't care. Who some people? Well, the people that are awakening. The people that are about to bring this corrupt world down and build the new world up. 
Who's got your back right now outside of the people that follow you? Like who, who, who that has a name is fighting for you right now? That's why I asked when's the last time you spoke to Trump if he reached out to you and said, I'm going to help you. Uh, because I know when you won, he went on InfoWars, and then he say something like, Alex, I'm going to make you proud, or when we get in, something's no, going to happen. No, that was, that was, Trump called me after he won and said, thank you. I'm, I'm giving my energy to Trump. I don't need him to protect me. He's the, he's the lion in the, in, under attack by the hyenas. Sure. He doesn't, I don't call Trump for support. Trump knows he's got my full support. Well, you asked him for help. Publicly asked him for help just recently. No, I've asked him to defeat the enemy trying to shut down free speech. There's a big difference. Isn't that in a way indirectly asking for help? Or no, not? no, no. He understands he has to take action against the tech giants that are Chicom funded trying to dominate us. That, that's for all of us. Well, you know, he's already not on the side of Bezos. He's not a fan of Bezos and what he's doing. But yeah, Bezos and them are, Bezos and, and Amazon have their own problems, but they're, they're child's play compared to Google and Apple. Because of influence. Obviously, Amazon's game is a different game than... They're uh, here in America. Right. And so Amazon's our least of our problems. Who's got your back though right now? Who's, who's backing you up right now? Who's calling you saying, hey, I'm going to go out there and fight for you? The strongest thing you can do is to have nobody having your back. I mean... Alex. It's, it's, like, no, it's like the Alamo. You know about 1836, right? Sure. 180 people fighting like 5,000, everybody dies. But they knew that was going to happen. And they were so pissed off that when Travis drove the line in the sand, almost everybody st stood across it. So see, these are real sacrifices. These aren't like Satanist sacrifices where they do it with a little kid and all these people trying to act powerful. It's about giving yourself. It's very Christ-like. So it'll be remember InfoWars. It'll be remember Alex Jones when we win this and watch the next phase of human expansion. You think what you're doing right now is Christ-like? Yes, I, I think standing up for what's right, being fearless, and building a future is in the spirit of Christ. I wouldn't say it's Christ-like. Yeah, but he had allies, right? I mean, even his Judas, let's just say he backstabbed them. But Jesus he had, had a lot of allies, huh? No, I, out of the 12, you, you don't think people backed them up? Luke, Mark, Matthew, you don't think? So I'm asking, who's on your side right now? But you, that's what I'm telling you, is that we've already changed the world. And I need to take my licks, and I will take them. Fine, you're taking it right now, but who's, got, who's in your corner today, Alex? This is five billion views. You have been heard. Your website gets tens of millions of traffic that come in. You're not, you're not a blogger that got excited and made a rumor about a video with Kim Kardashian, and they posted a video. No, but I'll ask you a question again. Yeah. Why does the system fear what we do? They don't care about kids at Sandy Hook. They don't care about Iraq. They don't. Why is it? Because it's the spirit. But who's got your back right now? I'm gonna, the spirit does. Outside of the spirit, who has there your back? There is nothing but the spirit. In the political side, left, right, middle, business, who is saying, I'm going to spend money to go out there and make sure Alex is back on the platform? I'm going to make sure I go out uh, there and know, support I, anybody. I, you know, I'm, I'm not directed by any group. But I will tell you that patriots in the Pentagon and the military are watching Google and Facebook and these arrogant assholes very closely. And uh, I'm not coordinating with anybody, but I, I can tell you that I think when they make their moves, they'll be unpleasantly surprised by what happens. And I feel really sorry for them. And that's just what happens to happen to these people. Has anybody gone vocal saying, I'm going to back you up? I'm not talking Mar. Ted or Rubio. I mean, you go to Rubio and Rubio says, who is this guy? I don't know this guy. You know Marco well, Rubio's knows who you punk. are. No, but what I'm trying to say is... I mean, okay, you want to know who back... I mean, Matt Drudge has had a lot of courage. Okay. One of the biggest websites in the world. Yep. DrudgeReport.com. He, he's backed me up. And it's, it's not about me being backed up. It, it, it's not like I sit there and go, I'm going to do the right thing. Am I backed up here? I've exposed the human animal chimeras. I've exposed the surveillance via the smartphones. I exposed the world government that's unelected. I rebooted with my listeners the entire resistance worldwide, and that's why they hate me, because they track it back to Brazil, they track it back to Rocky Evac, Iceland, they track it back to Eastern Europe. They know that InfoWars was ground zero. And like I said, that was years ago. I've already metaphysically know that I've got important work to do as long as God wants me to, but I've already moved on. And it, the world's moved on. It's not about me and my temporal power on this planet. I'm a dead man. And 
like everybody else, and I'm just moving forward. And dead so man, I'm, as in eventually you're going to die, or dead man meaning your career's you're done. What, what, what does dead mean I, to you? I, the enemy wants me dead, and and I'm I'm comfortable with that. So, that's it. I'm dead, and I'm ready. So, the work's already done. You, you figured it out like I blew the globalist up. It already happened. How are you doing emotionally right now? I love it. Yeah, you're good. I'm close, very close to very close to God. Very close to God. Very close. You know, in fact, I always feel my heart, and stomach, now it's in my bones. Like, like every moment is like closer to God. I, I can't explain it. I'm so close to God right now. I. Are you in prayer mode right now? Are you are you speaking all the no, time? Are, are you I just feel good. Peace? I mean, are you relaxed? I am at peace. I am at now. I'm now at peace. I'm now at peace. It's not my name or who I am. The enemy knows I love God. I love Jesus. And so I've already passed on. And that's why the enemy hates me because I'm well beyond their grasp now. Far beyond their grasp. I just pray that God will have mercy on my children. But I trust God. So it's God's will now. So you don't think there's anything here for you to figure out a way to bring it back and have this be a second coming of Alex's mind getting to work and doing all that stuff? You think it's it for you right now? Oh, I mean, the Lord works in mysterious ways. I'm just telling you that I knew when Trump was elected election night that I told everybody, I said, it's going to get really bad. They're coming after us. Like, we've won. It'll be the president. We're all set. And I said, no. I said, no, we're not set, get ready. And I said, I've completed my work. And everything else now is up to everybody else. So I've already completed the mission and Trump's trying to complete the mission. And now Trump has given us prosperity and everything else. And if we don't take it, then that's us. See, it's a spiritual choice. And so I'm not worried about me. I, I really am not. I, people think, oh, you're being attacked, you're being lied about, it, like, because we're on target. We know the program and we know it better than the Satanist. And because we know the program, they hate us because they don't have the next level understanding. So I'm not worried. I mean, there's all these questions about GMO and vaccines and globalism and the fertility dropping and the families and little kids committing suicide everywhere and just evil is flooding in and it becomes this thing about Alex Jones questions Sandy Hook. He's a bad guy. Oh my God. You know, when they staged all this other stuff before, anybody would question that. Babies in incubators. You know about Iraq, the babies in incubators, 1990. And so at the end of the day, I'm just not worried. Like, I don't care about the world. I don't care what they say about me. I don't care. Are you staying, still staying up to date? Are you still following the news? Are you still following what's going on? Are you still reading? Are you still waking up and going through the same routine? Oh, I has, absolutely do. Routine I mean, hasn't I'm changed. sure, here's the thing. I'm sure if I've got some great new future and things turn around, they're great. It's just that I know metaphysically, like a B-17 over Nazi Germany, I already dropped bombs. It blew up their power plant and I'm flying off and they're on, and like Messer Smith are chasing me, but I can look back and see the power plants on fire. Like the mission was complete. I hope I go back and land and get back in and go and do it again. But I already blew them to high heaven. You're not saying I'm done, my job has been served, you know, I'm not going to go out there and play in the offensive anymore. You're saying you're still doubling down on playing offense. Yes, you're not but I down. already fundamentally, like a, a Super Bowl team wins like three or four Super Bowls. Sure. Okay, I can win another Super Bowl. It's not about a person. I'm gonna, yeah, of course. But there's no more. The, America, the world's awake, brother. They're awake to globalism. It's over. It, the chain reaction from Brazil to Russia to the UK to Germany to, to, to everywhere, it's already happened. And so it matters how hard the road is for everybody. We love the children. We hope they don't go through pain, but we've showed the children the way. What I'm telling you is the fuse is already lit. The information already detonated. And so I hope I can help people in the future, but I've already, the enemy already metaphysically knows that I, with God's help, it's all God and all Jesus, already devastated them. I foresaw it 
when I was a teenager, long before, I prepared it and I built it. With everybody else's energy, we were all together, but I was at the front of the line. We did that with Christ's spirit. We defeated the enemy. Now the enemy's coming on to me, and that's good, because while I'm doing this, our people are already light years ahead. And while I delay them here, we're winning. You understand that? While I delay them here, while they chew me up and destroy me, our children are launching into the next level. Assume uh, 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 anybody there that's a decision maker is watching this. I'll give you the final thoughts. What are you thinking about right now? You have the platform, you have the audience. What would you like to say? I'd say the decision makers are already watching. And I think the decision makers already know the choice. They're just afraid to stand up to this anti-human thing. And they're afraid that the public isn't willing to make the right decisions, but that's what leadership's about. And so people have to decide which side they're on. I mean, this is like a big space walk. They say those astronauts walk out from the space station or from the space shuttle, it's like, you're looking down at the earth 10,000 miles, looking up at infinity and it's like, they say there's nothing like it and that, that's it. You have to believe in humanity and if you just do that, everything else follows. So that's it that, and that's why they don't like me if you ask that question over and over again, is because I don't fear them. I've already been around the bend. I've already seen where it goes, and uh, that's scary, because they've not been there. But they will be there soon enough. They're gonna meet their maker, and they're gonna face God eye to eye with pure consciousness, and they're gonna have to decide who they serve. So, today, uh, you get a chance to decide for yourself from everything you heard. Uh, uh, he was pushed. We addressed every single topic that we can think about. And uh, he was open. He gave his thoughts. He gave his opinions. Uh, I appreciate you coming out. That was great. I, I love being challenged. I time with you. This was good. Thanks for watching, everybody.